Taliban opens and then immediately recloses schools for girls in Afghanistan. On March 17th, the Taliban announced that they would allow female high school students back to school. A week after the announcement, they backtracked on their decision. An education ministry notice informed, quote, all girls high schools and those schools that have female students above class six um, that are off until the next order. The education ministry explained that the schools would reopen after a decision regarding the female school uniforms is made based on, quote, Sharia law and Afghan tradition. The initial announcement of resuming secondary education for schools thrilled many in the nation, but it was not without conditions. The spokesperson for the Taliban's Ministry of Education explained that female students will be assigned in a separate classroom and will only be taught by female teachers. Despite the Taliban's best efforts to have its Islamic Emirate recognized as a legitimate government, most countries, especially Western nations, are reluctant. The education of girls and the rights of women are a central sticking point in their relationship to the new rulers of Afghanistan. The Taliban's sudden U-turn on girls' education caused deep anger and resentment from many parents and students. A recent video posted on Twitter went viral, which showed a girl crying after being sent home. The girl can be heard sobbing while saying, quote, Mother, they didn't let me go to school today. They said girls aren't allowed to go to school. Should I play the video? Um, can you read the caption to the video first? Because I don't think you there are it. subtitles and it's not in English. Okay. Um, uh, quote, Mother, they didn't let me go to school today. They said girls aren't allowed to go to school. And then it continues, Afghanistan is the only country in the world where girls are banned from going to school. Hey, let's play the video. <laughs> oh. You know, I've never no. seen, I see a lot of videos like this after the schools for girls were shut down again. Because, like this is emotional abuse, right? Because you're like, first you told them that the schools are opening and on the day that they're going to school, on that day they told them like, nope, sorry. Like, um, but I've never seen this many kids so excited to go to school. Like, you know, that has not been my experience of childhood. My experience of childhood has been like people being excited that school is closed. But every time I see videos of in Afghanistan, girls, is, girls, mostly girls, constantly, you know, demanding to go to school and they get heartbroken. There were so many videos like this of uh, girls crying about the schools being closed. I, um, I mentioned to you what I thought my hypothesis was for why they first allowed it and they didn't allow it. Yes, I think, please, please explain. You know, okay, so I don't know if this is true or not, okay? But I think a lot of people think Taliban is just one thing, okay? But Taliban, there's a whole bunch of inter people fighting over uh, with each other, Taliban versus Taliban, whether what's more important, right? Like. A lot of Taliban think a lot of members of Taliban think like Taliban is changing. This is not what we fought for. We're giving like all our values are being gone. But the other Taliban is like, okay, we need to run this country, so we need to like appease the international world so that they actually trade with us, they actually recognize us because we need money coming in. We need to have like this and that. So we're gonna like you know. So and I think there's like different ideas fighting with each other within Taliban, right? And I think um, they promised the international community that the girls would be educated, but a lot of Taliban were not happy with it. But when the girls actually came out, the image, the, I, this is my, my feeling about this. I don't know if this is true or not, okay? But I think seeing all these girls just walking in the streets without a burqa, right? With just, with just a hijab and no burqa, was such a shocking um, negative um, view, you know, it's, it just, you know, for us, it seems like these, these are very conservative outfit, like they're wearing a full hijab, they're covering their they're hair. They're already very covered up. <laughs> they're very covered up, but I think for a Taliban in mind, like this is like spreading, like it seems very degenerate, like 
all these women out in the open without a man, you know, guiding them. And they're none of like they're not wearing a burqa or anything. All of their faces are showing. So I think the day that the schools for girls open and seeing all of these girls in the street, the shock of that gave an upper hand to people to the Taliban that were like, "This is not okay," right? And it was like, it, like they a lot of Taliban who might have been on the sideline, I think, like were convinced that yeah, okay, this is not okay because I think that some Taliban were like this, this is this what you want? Is this what Taliban has become? Look at look at the level of degeneracy that we're spreading in Afghanistan. This is happening under our name. Look mm-hmm. at all these girls in the street just walking about freely, right? Like they're like this cannot happen under you know our regime. Like you know this is like too much, right? So I think with that imagery, they managed to get the upper hand and be like, okay, no, 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 no. We're not going to let this happen. So they closed it. And now the wording is like, okay, we're going to re we have to, we're going to reopen school girls, but we have to have a talk about the dress code. Right. Like, so that's what the word is right now. I don't know if what that means, I don't know if they're going to like, because every, like everything was covered except I think also the, um, the, the, the hijab that doesn't have a burqa or a chador, it fits the body too well. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you can see curves and you can see, you can see like, the silhouette of their body. The, you can see the silhouette of the body, right? So even though the entire body is covered, the hair is covered, the fact that the girls look so, you know, you can see the body shape for that, the, the, for that, for them, that's unacceptable, right? They want a covering that the silhouette is not observable, right? So, yeah, I think a lot of them were like thinking like, oh my God, all these girls, I can see their bodies, I can see their silhouette. This Like the hijab that we consider, um, even Iran's regime considers acceptable, I think based on Taliban standards, is too much, right? So mm-hmm. I think that's what they, that's what they're reacting to. Well, Armin, that's I think, you, I think yeah. you're very yeah. much correct because I found some analysis by the BBC that I wanted to share. So this is from the BBC, oh. quote, Privately, Taliban members admit female education remains a controversial issue amongst their most hardline elements. This chaotic and last-minute policy reversal makes clear the divisions within the group and underlines how out of touch with the aspirations of modern Afghan society parts of the leadership are. Activist Mahumba Siraj, founder of the Afghan Women's Network, was bemused by the U-turn. Quote, the excuse they gave was, you don't have the proper hijab on. There was no ruling. They just decided this morning that the hijab was not proper for whatever reason, she told the BBC. She said, the girls' schools' uniforms in Afghanistan were, are pretty covered up, always. And sec- the secondary schools, schools are already segregated by gender. Um... Yeah, so that basically goes to your point. This is more a reflection of the hardline elements saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! What are we doing here? We can't. This we can't be doing this. Look at look at this." And they're like, uh, "Shoot, okay, uh, we'll figure out the better hijab and uh, figure it out later." So it, at the moment, it's just on like indefinite hold until they can figure out what's proper hijab. Now, what's interesting is the BBC also noted that despite what many people might perceive or believe, the actual rate of girls going to school where available has continued or actually increased after the Taliban came to power because there actually is increased security and safety under the Taliban. So mm-hmm. it's not one size fits all. It, it varies highly depending on the region because there have been many regions that have under you know, kind of under the table, very quietly, like continued girls education, even in secondary school and high school, like this whole time. Like they, you know, just did it very carefully. They didn't make a big deal about it, but they, I mean, they still continued despite these explicit bans. And then there are some areas where it's just been a solid no go. So it isn't as totalistic as people might perceive. And I still am fascinated by the fact that in these areas where it has been allowed to continue, albeit very quietly, that there are reports that the attendance has actually increased. Um, Yeah, so I think the Taliban would wish that they could have girls' schools open 
without that much attention brought to it, okay? Because, like, I mean, the people at the top, okay? I let all of the Taliban. Because if you, if, imagine if you were the Taliban, right? So you want international recognition. You want to be able to do trade with the world. You want the money, your money to be unfrozen and everything flowing back in, right? So, but at the same time, you're afraid of insurgency. Like, you're afraid of people... Taliban turn Taliban members turning on you, right? So we're this joining is like, ISIK. I, yeah, IS, I mean, ISK. Yeah. So actually, that's a very good point, Susanna. Like, that's a lot of the people who left Taliban and joined ISK, um, who's now attacking Taliban. Um, a lot of them are people who think that Taliban has lost its way and even accuse Taliban of being ex-Muslims, <laughs> right? <laughs> Taliban is one of us now because, you know, they're thinking like they're, they're infidels and unbelievers because they are negotiating with the United States and also doing these things, allowing girls to go study. Like, they're like, okay, you guys are not Muslim anymore, right? So that's why a lot of people, um, well, many people have left the Taliban and join other groups, right? And so Taliban has, you know, the, the way they're calculating these is like they're trying to find a way to do these things without like breaking Taliban apart, you know? Because I think they're more, right now, they're more afraid of their own members than anything external, right? So I think they they, they I might, might feel like they're stuck in between a rock and a hard place because they, they might have internal, okay, so if they don't get internal international recognition, it, uh, Afghanistan is going to suffer economically, is, is already suffering, econo devastated economically, right? But this could be become even worse and worse and worse if they don't manage to start opening to the world, like both for investment and trade, right? And that could start an internal collapse, like internal revolt from within. But if they... But if they open, also it could start like in both cases. One because of pop so if they open to the world, um, they they might get a revolt from the Taliban members, and if they don't open to the world, they might get a revolt internally from the people because of the uh, poverty right, or and absolute failure of running a government, right? So they are just trying to find figure out where that line is and how what to how to is is I mean there, it's not a very I mean, if you were Taliban and you had the Taliban mindset, this would be very, a very difficult decision to make on where to what to do right now. Um, yeah, but we'll see. At a later time, because we don't have time during this segment, but I think it'd be really interesting to discuss the sanctions regimes on Afghanistan and the controversy surrounding them, you know, holding women's rights over the country as a condition of receiving international aid or their foreign reserves. Um, while we might think that that's, you know, morally superior or, um, for the goodwill of these women and girls in the nation, um, in the meanwhile, well, they, they are actually suffering and being forced to sell their organs and being forced into child marriages yeah. in the meanwhile, they're starving to death in the meanwhile for the sake of their own women's rights, you know, which yeah, is worse, which is actually... Yeah, you might. I mean, education is very important, but like food might be more important right now, right? So yeah. I don't know if you want to. I mean, you know, I think like wanting girls in Kabul to be able to go to school and using the starvation of girls in other, you know, in outside of the cities as a weapon for the sake of the girls in the cities to be able to go to school. That like seems like okay. Like, are we actually pro woman if we're yeah, starving exactly. some of? The, are we we're starving some women so that other as a pressure against? Taliban, Herman, it's not even some; it's the majority of the country. The majority, yeah, we're the vast we're starving, majority. It's we're like less than five percent that has food security. It's not very. It's not very pro woman to starve the majority of women in Afghanistan for the sake of education. Um, the education of some other women of Afghanistan. However, somebody might say, actually, Armin, you're wrong. Because education is the future economy of the country, right? You know, you know what I mean. So they're saying like, if you if you deprive education from half of the population, lo longer term, that also might actually make more people go hungry because you need education for a country to become developed um, economically pro progress, right? So 
you might be like, yeah, yeah but in the maybe. meanwhile, these girls that you care so much about are being forced into marriages at the age of six years old. Yeah. It's not an easy calculation to see, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's not that simple to be like, okay, I don't, it's not that easy to see which, what is the right decision. However, one wrong decision by the Biden administration that is obvious, I think is when they, when they, the frozen money of Afghanistan, instead of releasing that to Afghanistan, they give it to the victims of 9-11. That is okay? outrageous. That was the most insane decision I've ever seen. Like one of the most insane decisions I've ever seen uh, that was made by the Biden administration. I'm pretty Taking sure. The, the money of the people of Afghanistan and giving it, it to the victim of 11 is outrageous. It is, is a this... moral outrage. Like, obviously we have sympathy for the victims of 9-11 and their families. Okay. But they they're have not, received they're not starving right a now. lot of mon monetary compensation for that event already over the years. <sighs> Are the people of Afghanistan not also victims of 9-11 in a way? Yeah, exactly. That they're it was some a... of the most, they're some of the biggest victims of 9-11. Like, it is outrageous. I can't, like, that itself needs to be getting It's like the stuff. people of Afghanistan didn't do 9-11. Why are you stealing their money and giving it to the victims of 9-11? They need it more right now. They're starving. The victims of 9-11, they're not, they're not starving. Okay, like, why? Like, to I don't understand the logic unacceptable. behind this. Like this is like this was the Biden. Okay, so we have been defending Biden administration many times against like false, um, you know, accusations against them. But this one, this does not. This was insane. I don't know if there's any excuse for that. Um, yeah, Can you look at a few of the live chat questions in response to this news while I go to the bathroom really quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah, D is agreeing. Say, yep, that was wrong. Um, Miss Cha is also agreeing, saying preach. Uh, Beep Poop is saying Afghanistan wasn't even responsible for 9-11. Well, not Afghanistan, but some people are saying well, you could maybe say the Taliban was complicit by providing uh, bin Laden a base of operations, right? So you could say Taliban was, but obviously the Afghanistan, Afghanistan and the Afghan people weren't. Um... Yeah, blank name agrees. Oh, Katie is here. Hi, Katie. Katie just woke up, joined after a long time. Hi, Katie. It's great to have you here. Actually, Katie, it's good that you're here because the next news is about the Indian state government making Hindu scripture part of the curriculum. So it's so good to have you here so we could get your commentary on it. Yeah. So I don't have... Let me just share this screen. Because I don't have any other commentary on that. Okay, Susanna's back. Good. Susanna's coming. We had there a bunch of starred comments, but we need. Oh to wow, on. you're you're right. Never mind. I forgot about those. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I should have read read those. Okay, so Ghost Bunny saying so the way girl a girl is dressed prevents them from getting an education. I wonder if parents can reach out to Western educators and get online schooling for their children. That'd be very um, difficult. Only about 11% of Afghanistan has access to the internet. There you go, Susanna already has the answer. To you. Uh, music is saying they promised girls could go to school and they broke it. Yep. They still Blanket. say that it's going to resume. It's just indefinite. But they're saying like it'll it will happen this year. Yeah, yeah. They just they they're saying we need better outfits. This is too much. This is like they they were yeah. Um, which is weird because we're talking about children here, right? We're talking about children. Talk about a self-report. Yeah, blank name is saying unacceptable. FDS Islamic State. Yep. Uh, DSC because because they can't play outside. They're either Armen. They are hostages. Who? They, oh, the children, the girls. Yes. Um, oh, this was in a comment that I highlighted. These girls have never seen the seen Taliban in their entire life. Yeah, actually, it's very interesting because some of us forget that how young the population of Afghanistan is. Like. When when Taliban came to Kabul, the vast majority of Kabul had never seen Taliban ever before. Like the people were coming out to see them as if they're a tourist attraction because they've heard about Taliban, you know, how, uh, on the news all the time. Taliban this, Taliban attacked this place at that place. Okay, but they never seen Taliban in Kabul before. And now, like all these children that used to hear about Taliban but never seen Taliban, now be, they're being told like, oh yeah, Taliban is now telling you that you, co you can't go to school. 
So like it's a, it's like a nightmare. Like that that boogeyman that was always there in these rural rural areas in the mountains that was always attacking that the country was at war with at, at all, most of our child all of their childhood is now taking over the cities that they're living in and telling you not that you can't go to school. So it's like I can't imagine like as a child like even even if you're like 15 year old your entire life you've never been ruled by Taliban and now they're o- taken over i'm telling you I think like, everything everything has changed it's some um, yeah it's obviously everything. highly variable depending on location but i have to push back on you making it seem like this is only about education in the cities because this is supposed to be about education across the entire country. Right. we can both say that who will benefit the most will be the people already in metropolitan areas but it's it's not like only it's for right. the people in Kabul, right? But what's so interesting is to Kabul your point, your in 2020, 42% of Afghanistan's population was under the age of 14. Right. That's crazy. Um, okay, so the reason why I was saying Kabul and Kandahar, I should say some other major cities as well, the reason why I say that is because, like you said, in in rural areas, um, you might be able to get away with teaching, even if that's the official policy, you might be able to get away with still teaching girls under the radar. You know what I mean? So that's what I thought it might be happening. I mean, right now, like, is there nobody, um, I mean, a lot of people don't even know what the rules are. You know what I mean? Like people, yeah. apparently men are supposed to now put on beard if they want to be, have government jobs, but some yeah, men are putting talk beards. Yeah, we're going to next week. Okay, yeah, yeah, but like people don't know like what the rules are. If if the rules that are on the books are going to be enforced, some people are going out of their way to uh, to um, to even follow the rules that are not still on the books. But Taliban had those rules twenty years ago, just in case. So people, it's it's very confusing. Like people don't know who's in charge. I mean, the Taliban doesn't even know who's in charge right now, like who's like, which rules are going to be enforced and which rules aren't like it's, it's, it's chaotic anyways. Um, and last comment, Adam was saying, imagine if you are, if you were the Taliban is a phrase you don't hear. enough. Of. <laughs> okay. Adam. All right. Sure. Okay. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.